this episode on Love is Blind. I do not. Run. 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 It is the final episode of Love is Blind, and all of our couples have made it to their wedding days. But this episode's not wasting any time. Right off the bat, we're picking up where we left off with Damien's decision. I do not. Oh, this is gonna be a disaster. Someone get a camera on that mom. Get a mom cam going. So Damien says, Sorry, Giannina, I can't marry you, and this is your fault. I've stayed consistent all the way through this. Okay. And okay. you have not. Yeah, all the ups and downs, the butterflies and no butterflies, the coming and going, and oh, oh, oh she's going. So Giannina ain't hearing it. She's not sitting down for a chat. She's not looking for some comfort from mom and dad. She's pulling a full runaway bra. So Mama G goes to comfort the bride, and Damien tells his bros that while Giannina was in today, he never knows what the next day could bring, and that's why he said no. He wants someone who's all in, every day. Giannina then comes back, and when Damien enters the room, she's so mad she shoots lasers out of her eyes, literally obliterating him. And once all the pieces are put back together, Giannina is like, Bro, you couldn't have even told me? Like, a little heads up would have been nice. And Damien says he didn't know till the last second, which is total BS, and Damien then tells Giannina the same thing he told his bros, but he adds, he's in love with her, and he wants to continue their relationship. Oh, and uh, yeah, sorry about embarrassing you in front of your friends and family and millions of people who will eventually watch the show. But Giannina ain't having it, she says, Peace out, loser. And heads home. One wedding down, four to go. Next on the docket, it's Amber and Barnett. And their wedding day hasn't gotten off to a great start. I got a text from Barnett. He's, he's freaking out. Yes, Barnett had a freak out in the shower that morning. Because there's a lot of little things that come with marrying Amber. Her debt, which isn't that bad. The knowledge that she wants to be a stay-at-home mom and he'll have to support their family financially. The idea that some of his family might not like Amber. A lot of little things that aren't deal breakers on their own, but when piled up can become concerning. So it's now a question of, does Amber make Barnett happy enough to wash away everything else? So Barnett arrives and takes his spot. The bride enters, and first up is Amber's decision. I do. I will. Absolutely. <laughs> Which doesn't really come as a surprise. The real tension lies with Barnett and his decision. <laughs> oh, I do. 100%. <laughs> and no need for an upset mom cam this time, as Barnett says, I do. Something when I first watched, I thought could have gone either way. The two are then married, and it wouldn't be Amber without finishing off with one of these. I can't. I can't imagine a life without you. Good, because you're stuck. And hey, we're one for two now. We're batting 500, and that's a pretty good stat. So, who's next to take the plunge? Oh, it's Kenny and Kelly. My god, wake me up when it's over. Now, Kenny seems to be all ready to go and make a life of it with Kelly. She's genuine, she's ambitious, she's passionate, and she's the woman that I want to spend the rest of my life with. But what about Kelly? The love that I had for my ex-boyfriend, um, I mean, my mom has said this for years. Like She was like, you were infatuated with him. What? 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 Now there's an ex-boyfriend? Uh, like, is, is this an episode of Lost? I'm starting to lose track. What? When was there an ex-boyfriend? Why haven't Kenny and Kelly done it yet? What timeline are we in? What is the Dharma initiative? So, Kelly's having doubts, and I guess we should have seen this coming because Kenny and Kelly have had little screen time in comparison to the other couples, and the only storyline they have had has been that Kelly wasn't ready to have sex. And now, she's saying this. I am nervous because I don't know if I am like 100% in love with him. Or stuff like this. Would you have talked to him if you saw him before? No, I probably wouldn't have. Or stuff like this. 
if I say I don't, it's simply because we're not it's not the right time. Which is some pretty jarring storytelling because it felt like at the beginning they were all over each other, then nothing in the middle, then suddenly boom, wedding day and all this truth comes out. But is this all just wedding jitters? Well, it's time to find out as the third wedding of the episode is on its way. Kenny takes his spot and Kelly walks down the aisle. And after they both express how wonderful this journey is, it's Kelly's decision first. I do or I don't. I don't. Now, here's the tea. In the first two weddings, the first person to say I do or I don't was the person who was the lock. The person we pretty much knew what their answer was going to be. We knew that Giannina was more likely to say yes because they gave her a positive edit before the wedding, while Damien was set up as someone still questioning everything. With Amber and Barnett, it was the same. She was ready, he had cold feet. Only difference was he ended up saying yes. But this is flipped on its head with Kenny and Kelly. Kenny has been given edits all episode, making it seem like he was ready for marriage while Kelly was the one with doubts. Yet Kelly goes first. Seems like a bad decision by the producers, right? Why not have Kenny go first, say yes, and then get rejected? Better TV, right? I'm thinking because they knew Kenny was also going to say no. And I'll talk more about this in a future video detailing where the couples are now. But for the moment, Kelly walks off and Kenny is left to give a speech to the wedding attendee saying, uh, thanks, thanks for coming, before he walks off and gets really weird with the production team. How you feel about Kelly? This is not about how I feel about Kelly. I'm not gonna have things filmed. Please stop recording, Jimmy. And while Kenny turns his back on the show, it's time for our fourth wedding. And Jessica's loving it. It's my wedding day, and I couldn't be happier. But is she happy because she's ready to take the plunge with Mark, or because her nightmare's finally over? And I, I, I think we know the answer. It's finally over! I'm free! So the show plugs us with positive comments all around from Mark, no surprise, and Jessica too, as if to say, hey, look, these two might actually get married, and I'm just here like... Sure, Jan. So it's time to get ready and make a decision on if these two are ready to marry each other. I couldn't have asked to be in this with anyone else. And Barnett's like, You're good, you're good baker. And while Jessica and Mark get ready with their bridesmaids and groomsmen, Jessica breaks down her uneasiness like this. The person I fell in love with in the pod was a totally different experience in the real world. Which is something we've heard from her time and time again that disconnect from who she heard in the pods with who she sees in front of her. But is there any possibility she's been able to get over that and consider saying yes to Mark? Well, it's too late now, time to gather the family and friends and... All right, Mark's dad's looking real happy to be here. Oh yeah, and his uh, best friend Bardia too. So, Mark arrives, no surprise, on the arm of his mom, and then it's time for Jessica to enter. Well, it looks like Mark has made up his mind. So when it comes to the I do's, it's really no surprise when his answer is this. Two. Dang it, it would have been so much easier if he just said no. So now, it's Jessica's turn. I do, or I don't. And in the most shocking event in Love is Blind, nah, I'm just kidding, it turns out exactly as you think it does. I cannot. And these two people have obviously not been watching this season. I've always been truthful with you because I respect you so much. Sure, Jan. So Jessica says peace out and heads for the door. Mark is heartbroken and Jessica sits heartbroken too. Cause you know, a producer just told her Barnett said yes to Amber. But really thank goodness she said no because even if it was obvious, this relationship was just messy. And now it's time to finally put that mess to rest. All right, last but not least, the final wedding and the one I was personally most excited for, Lauren and Cameron. And if these two don't get married, then love is not just blind, it's dead. It's dead, people. Because from the start, Cameron and Lauren took me by surprise. And by that, I mean I wasn't expecting how fast I would fall for these two. And it's hard to really encapsulate why it's worked so well for me. I think at the root of it is just 
these two seemed to have a genuine love and commitment. And even though it was so sudden, it still felt real. Now, of course, this is still a TV show, and just like the other wedding days, there's one person who's seemingly sure of their decision, and one person who might be the spoiler. Here, it's Cameron who is certain, and Lauren who might say no. They've been setting this up for a few episodes now, with Lauren expressing how crazy the sudden change is, and how much she values her independence and alone time. If she were to say no, I don't know how long it would be until I would be alright again. But once again, time's up, they have Mom coming in, being all happy with Lauren, and then they all pray for a good life for Lauren and Cameron. Then Dad comes in, and he's just in tears. Oh, no. <laughs> You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Look at you. And I swear, if they put all of this in and Lauren somehow says no, it would be the cruelest act of editing I've ever seen. A little nervous, a little excited, and a little... Just plain scared. And see, I knew he was going to end up just being a teddy bear. Alright though, it's time. Cameron takes his place, and here comes the bride. Yeah, that right there was my reaction too. I mean, Cameron is just in tears watching Lauren walk down the aisle. And he can't even get through his vows without Lauren having to wipe away his face. But it's not just Cameron, or me for that matter, tearing up through the ceremony. The whole guest list is feeling the love. You made me want to be a better man. And you have everything that I need in a partner. Even Lauren's brother's all misty-eyed. But it's time to make this official. Of course, up first is Cameron. And to no one's surprise, it's an I do from him. I do. And with that, all that's left is Lauren's response. I do... Or I... No, I'm not even going to say it. I do. <laughs> Luckily, this aired back in 2019 when good things still happened, and Lauren and Cameron are married. You may now kiss your bride. <laughs> and there you have it. Lauren and Cameron and Amber and Barnett head to the receptions while the rest of the couples hit the bricks alone. And at the end of the journey... Two of the five remaining pod dating couples are married, proving that love truly is blind 40% of the time. So that's it for this final Let's Watch and recap of Love is Blind, episode 10. Thanks for watching along with me during this time of self-isolation and social distancing. And I do plan on one more video detailing where all of these couples are now, and I don't just mean what's up with them right after the airing of the show or the reunion special, I mean now as in 2020. So, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and keep tuned for that. And until then, Bachelor Fan Take, out. Today you guys have definitely proved that love is blind.